the other parts of our costume done, we're now going to get started on doing the uh, exhaust pipes for Optimus Prime. Uh, we, now, we already spoke about using this type of uh, pipe insulation if you wanted to do just a simple set of pipes that don't do anything. That's what we originally did. However, as time went on, we, uh, I had the idea to actually turn them into guns. So we got this set of guns from the dollar store. They're very cheap uh, ping pong guns. And the reason I chose these guns is because they have a really nice big wide opening. They're actually big enough to shoot actual ping pong. And with a nice big opening like that, it's going to give you a nice, really wide, beefy looking exhaust pipe. But they're also very lightweight. So what you're going to need to do that is a set of guns. doesn't have to be these exact ones, although these ones I got from Dollarama here in Canada. We've got some paper towel rolls. We did try using PVC pipe, but uh, weight became a real concern. You don't want them to be very heavy because it's going to be hard for your kids to hold them. And it's also going to create problems of keeping it attached to the sides of the costume. So we've got uh, two guns, our paper towel rolls, and we also have a bunch of magnets here. These are... Let's see, uh, three quarter inch by one inch ceramic magnets. Now, this is probably the most expensive part of the costume because a package of three costs about four dollars. So we actually need a total of 16 of these magnets. I found that anything less is just not going to be strong enough to keep the magnets in place. You'll notice with these paper towel holders, they're pretty close for matching the width but not quite and this is actually a very thin edge for them to be attached to I cut these little slits all around to widen it so that we can put the gun on and we'll have more of an edge on which to attach these and that will give you a much stronger more permanent bond one other thing that I found through experience is uh, the plastic that they use for these guns is very very cheap and it uh, also is extremely smooth and slippery so we are going to use a primer and prime this but before we prime it I would highly recommend that you also sand and scuff up as much of the edges as possible before doing so and that's just going to ensure that uh, later on when they're playing with the guns and they're hitting or maybe dropping to the ground that the paint is not going to chip off if you don't do that ahead of time there's a very very likely chance that uh, the paint won't have uh, bonded properly to the plastic and the paint's just going to chip right off. Alright, so we've glued the uh, paper towel rolls to the guns and this is basically what we end up with. As you can see here, those little slits spread help spread it out so that you can get a good fit and it's glued almost a whole inch length worth so this is going to be a very strong bond it shouldn't break at all uh, the next step is uh, this paper is a little bit thin so we're actually going to go ahead and paper mache uh, a couple layers of newspaper just to give it a little extra thickness and rigidity and anybody who knows how to do paper mache it's basically strips of newspaper and uh, white glue thinned down about 50% or you could use Mod Podge as well. We use uh, this one called Mod Podge 
It's a water-based sealer, glue, and finish. Once we get a couple layers of newspaper on here, we'll let it dry, and then we're going to sand everything smooth, and that should give us a nice smooth surface for, uh, for painting. So we have our guns here dried uh, with the paper mache, and um, it's a lot stronger than just the regular paper towel tube. Uh, we've gone ahead and sanded it a little bit, to uh, get it as nice and smooth as possible. You'll notice on this one here, we already put one coating of primer. A couple coats of primer and sanding in between will also help you get rid of any imperfections and trying to get it as smooth as possible. The next step is to actually attach our magnets. Now I found that for the guns to stay properly attached on the sides, it's really important to have no less than four magnets. We're going to start with eight magnets to begin with. Choose which side is going to be the inside and the outside. So the nicest looking side should be on the outside. If you have any rough patches like you have here, try and keep that on the inside. When I'm attaching these magnets, I glue them two at a time. And one of the reasons that I do that is one of the features of our guns is that when you take them off of the costume, they you can end up sticking them together. You have a double barrel gun and you only have to hold it with one hand. Uh, so pay special attention when you're attaching the magnets to make sure that all of the uh, polarities are in the right orientation. So I choose four spots somewhere here, 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 and here. So we can start by attaching them here to the back and you want to put a liberal a very liberal amount of glue I find that these ceramic magnets are quite good because there's a hole in the middle so the glue can go inside and that just helps everything stick on that much better while the glue is still wet we can remove the magnet and make sure that that hole is not plugged up. We don't want to glue these two pieces together. What we want is the glue to go all the way up to the top of this hole so that you've got the best possible hold and we'll glue the other side as well and just make sure that your guns are lined up and once you have a general idea of where you want want it to be you can disattach it wiping away any extra glue while the glue is still hot so with the magnets on our guns glued into place you see, they hold really tight. Now we're going to take four more magnets. And again, attach them first to make sure that we get all of our polarities correct. I use a little bit of a spacer here to lift them off the ground a little and then we're just going to trace around to see where those magnets meet and once we have it all marked off then we can glue the individual magnets into place so the very last thing we did was uh, to paint the guns silver and you see they attach so that you have a double barrel gun 
or you can hold them separately. Whatever, uh, whatever is uh, the preference of your child. We've got our ma magnets here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In between the coats, we always want to sand. But that's it. Uh, we've got a finished costume. So we're going to move on to making the helmet and uh, there's a very good video that we actually basically com copied 100% done by uh, Greyhouse Harbor. So we can show you uh, some of the basics. Uh, we start with uh, three one inch cardboard strips, one inch wide and uh, a certain length here. That's really going to depend on your child. And basically, what we're going to be doing with our cardboard strips is we're going to take one and we're going to wrap it all the way around their head. Now, we use the same method that we do with curving the other cardboards, which is to bend along the lines of corrugation that will just give you a nicer bend a nicer curved piece and the first step is to have a band that goes all the way around their head like so alright And once we're happy with that length, we're just going to mark it off on the back. So we glue this. We'll make sure that this is the back. And uh, once we have that, we also mark off our center line. And then from the center line, I go about three inches each way and then I also go about six six and a half inches from the center to over here and we're going to take these two other straps that we've also uh, bent and what we're going to do is we're going to glue them uh, from one front three inch space to the opposite side that has the uh, six, six inch space. Now it's probably better to do that with your child close by, so we'll go ahead and do that. So now that we have this side uh, glued on, you'll notice that it's on an angle and we want the strap to go over. It's going to go in a crisscross pattern mark this off keeping also marking the angle so by marking it that's going to allow us to glue it into place without actually having any hot glue close to your kid this is essentially what we're left with this is our basic framework that we're going to build the rest of the helmet around. We trimmed these little pieces away so we don't need them and we just lined them up with the central ring. We use very very thin cardboard because you're going to be asking this cardboard to do a lot of things that it doesn't want to do which is actually curve in multiple directions. So. I find that the thinner stuff is much, much easier to work with. Now, you could try to use foam. That might work. We haven't done that yet. But uh, since we made our first helmet with cardboard, we're going to continue that method. And uh, we just cut the pieces and just try to improvise.
So the first step will be to glue it here along the crown and if there's a few wrinkles that's okay you won't really notice them too much with the finished product so we just kind of fiddle around with the pieces until we're happy with them and what we're going to end up with is the pieces uh, will all generally line up like so you're going to have a little bit of a hole in the front, but that's not a problem. So once we're happy with the general shape, we can just go ahead and glue here and here. So we uh, just added a little draw piece here and here. And uh, there's a bit on the bridge of the nose, little pentagon shape here really you just kind of have to improvise as you go whatever looks right whatever feels right there is no right way or wrong way to do it as long as it fits so here for example I cut out a couple circles we're gonna put those right over here and Optimus is gonna have some ears and we got one little piece there and I'm gonna I'm gonna be happy with that to act as a guide we can use a compass and put in some of these circles here which will just make it easier for us to have as guidelines to paint later And we can do a series of concentric circles, which will be done in different colors. So here we have our helmet fully constructed. I think it looks pretty close to Optimus Prime. Just pay attention to a couple of the design elements, which is you've got this triangular piece which covers his mouth. You've got this long piece here. And he also has these, uh, on the sides, these ears, these long antennas. Uh, most Optimus Primes, these are actually a lot longer and a lot taller. But we try to keep it more or less the same height as the helmet itself. And the simple reason for that being is it has to fit inside of the costume. So it needs to be there, but we have to make sure that it's not too high so that it doesn't get stuck on anything. So once we're happy with that... We'll go ahead and, as with all our other cardboard, we're going to sand and seal with caulking all of our edges here. And then it will be ready for paint. So we finished making the helmet, uh, added all of our details. So it's an extremely thin and lightweight and uh, we were very mindful also when making it uh, one of the common mistakes that I've seen out there is when people are making helmets for their costumes they make them too big and it doesn't fit inside we just used a black permanent marker to do the lines you've got the mouth covered here we added a few details here also mostly done with black permanent marker uh, here we add a little bit of paint. Those are the two cardboard pieces similar to, uh, to what we have here. Uh, we've got an antenna with some uh, cardboard circle here and then we just added a few little details with some thin cardboard here and here. And most of this black stuff you see here is done with permanent marker. But uh, that's it. Oh, also what we've done, I uh, cut away the uh, cardboard and instead added a piece of elastic so that it will sit nice and snug on our boy's head. In terms of measurement, really just uh, glue a piece on one side, wrap it around your child's head, and you want a little bit of stretch 
so you'll have to uh, play around a little bit with that. You don't want it too loose, but you also don't want it to be too tight so that it's comfortable. So here we have our finished product. Nemesis Prime Costume. Just want to thank everyone for watching and wish you the best of luck in your own builds. Please send us your pictures and videos. We'd love to see how you made out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and happy building.